on a chilling, moonlit night. I gathered my courage to visit the cemetery and pay respects to my late father. The air was thick with an eerie silence as I walked through the iron gates, each creak echoing through the desolate graveyard. The pale moon cast long, haunting shadows, creating an unsettling atmosphere. I reached my father's grave adorned with wilting flowers and an aged tombstone. The familiarity of the sight brought both comfort and sorrow as I knelt to place fresh flowers an icy gust of wind sent a shiver down my spine. I glanced around feeling a peculiar sensation, uh, an inexplicable sensation that I was being watched. A sudden unease enveloped me and the darkness seemed to close in. I tried to shake off the feeling, attributing it to the gloomy surroundings. But as I stood, a flickering light in the distance caught my eye. There was an old weathered lantern swaying eerily, casting peculiar shadows amongst the tombstones. With a pounding heart, I began to walk away from the grave. But as I turned, I glimpsed a figure in the corner of my eye, a shadowy silhouette hauntingly resembling my father. My breath caught and a cold sweat broke out on my forehead. Is it really you? I whispered, my voice trembling. The figure seemed to draw closer, its features obscured in the darkness. Panic surged through me and I stumbled backward, but then a soft, familiar voice filled the air, a voice I hadn't heard in years. My child, fear not, it is I. My father's apparition stepped into the dim light and I felt a mixture of relief and terror. He looked ethereal, almost translucent, yet undeniably present. He reassured me, expressing love and peace from the other realm. But as the wind picked up and the lanterns flickered violently, his form seemed to waver a sudden dread enveloped me. Go, he whispered. Leave this place. In a frenzy, I turned and sprinted towards the gates. The feeling of being watched intensifying. As I glanced back one last time, I saw the figure of my father fade into the shadow. The memory of that night still haunts me, a reminder of the thin veil between the world of the living and the realm of the departed. It remains an enigma, forever etched in my mind. The night I felt my father's presence, both a comforting embrace and a spine-chilling premonition. It was a dark and stormy night when I found myself in the eeriest of places, a hospital elevator. Elevator. The sterile fluorescent lights flickered ominously, casting unsettling shadows on the cold linoleum floor. I had come to visit a sick friend on the top floor, but as the elevator ascended, a sense of unease settled over me like a heavy shroud. The elevator was silent except for the faint hum of machinery. And I couldn't shake the feeling that something was amiss. It stopped abruptly between floors, jolting me forward.
panic surged through my veins as the lights dimmed further, plunging the tiny metal box into near darkness. My heart raced as I pressed the emergency button, desperately trying to summon help. But the intercom crackled with static and a chilling voice, distorted and unnatural, echoed through the speaker. It whispered cryptic words that sent shivers down my spine. As minutes stretched into what felt like hours, I began to hear eerie noises from beyond the elevator's walls. Strange muffled cries and faint footsteps that seemed to be drawing closer. With each passing second, my fear deepened and I could feel an oppressive presence closing in on me. Suddenly, the elevator jolted to life, and with a gut-wrenching lurch, it began to descend rapidly. I clung to the handrail, my knuckles turning white as the lights flickered with increasing intensity. The voice on the intercom grew louder, now a cacophony of unearthly whispers that filled the confined space. Finally, with a bone-rattling crash, the elevator came to an abrupt halt. The lights went out completely, leaving me in pitch darkness. I fumbled for my phone, praying for some semblance of light or a connection to the outside world. As the pale glow of my phone's screen illuminated the tiny enclosure, I froze. The elevator was empty, devoid of any living presence. The voice on the intercom had fallen silent, and the eerie noises had ceased. With trembling hands, I managed to pry open the elevator doors and stumbled into the hospital corridor. I could hear the distant sounds of nurses and patients, and the hallway was bathed in the comforting glow of fluorescent lights. To this day, I cannot explain the chilling ordeal I experienced in that hospital elevator. Whether it was a supernatural encounter or a figment of my imagination, the memory of that night still sends a shiver down my spine, serving as a haunting reminder that sometimes the line between the ordinary and the truly terrifying can blur in the most unexpected of places.